Hey everyone, and welcome to the December 1st edition of the Chaos Weekly Community Call. I uh, hope everybody's doing great, and I love the hats that everyone is wearing. They're awesome. Um, yeah, we'll hop right in. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone had a good uh, break from Thanksgiving last week. We didn't have, um, like, it's going to be have to jog your memory a little bit a couple weeks back. But um, so I, I put in the minutes I just realized from last week, but it actually was from two weeks ago. So sorry if there's anyone who's detailed oriented and that's going to bother you. We'll just change that real quick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so last time we met, we had some action items that we had not um, discussed yet. So let's jump in those. Um, Specifically, we're talking about the community reports first. We'll just hop on that. And um, it looks like we don't have Matt or Sean on the call. So I will give the update on that. Uh, we are, um, I actually don't know what the LF said from Matt. And I think that Sean has automated some of that, right, Vinod? I think so that you no, can grab the yet. data quicker. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. We're working on it. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, we have had a few requests come through. So um, we're getting, I think, a little better every time. Um, and I'm also not sure. So I'm not sure what the result of Matt's conversation with the LF on how they handle their data went. And I'm not also not sure about uh, the privacy policy with Mike Dolan. So if Matt hops on later, we can get those updates from him. If not, we'll just get them next time. No big deal. Um, moving ahead, because I know we have a lot to talk about, uh, the community report outreach. So we had a really good meeting um, this morning, um, and we'll, we'll continue to meet every Tuesday at 930 Central. If anyone's interested in talking about this, you're more than welcome to join. It's the same regular chaos uh, Zoom link, so just pop in whenever you want. Um, we are currently looking at uh, some different buckets of people that we want to reach out to that we think that might have um, an interest and get some stuff out of, get some be a benefit out of the community reports. And so you can see that we, I listed those here in the, in the minutes. The one that was a little controversial that kind of um, redirected our, our goals with the community reports was the, um, this idea that potential or that educators or people running code boot camps might get some benefit out of these reports. Um, and it's, I know it wasn't kind of where we saw the direction of these going. We, we kind of set them up with uh, the, the open source maintainer in mind, um, but also, you know, maybe like people running OSPOs or InterSource that wanted to see projects that were in their kind of, kind of wheelhouse. So um, the, the departure here is that, uh, just a little backstory really quick. Um, when I was at PHP Women, we had a lot of um, people that would come to our group and ask where they could participate because they, they wanted to, but they didn't know where to go. They didn't know where to start. So um, we felt very kind of responsible for sending people in a good direction and not pointing them to a project that was going to be toxic or terrible. Uh, it, because if they have a terrible experience, I also had this experience at GitHub as well when I was running the Patchworks. If a newcomer has a bad experience, contributing to open source, they're very likely never going to come back to open source in general. Maybe, you know, if we're, if we're lucky, they decide to go to a different project, but they also might ever not ever come back to open source and, and be a part of the community. So I felt very responsible for sending people in the right direction. So I thought that maybe if, if, if I'm an educator and I want to give my students some potential projects where they could, could contribute, Maybe these reports might be a good kind of place to start where I could just pick some projects that I was familiar with, run some reports on them, just to kind of see, you know, what what communities might be a little bit more healthy than others. Um, so that was that kind of led us down this other path of, you know, all the other people who could request reports for different reasons, um, maybe not even being a maintainer, just even uh, an individual who wanted to see how is this project that I'm considering contributing to, how do they, how are they doing? Um, just, a, you know, real high level at a real high level. So um, that's where we kind of landed that that was maybe a whole segment of, of the open source community that could really get a, a good uh, benefit from these reports. Um, so we kind of decided to, and I would love to hear this group's, um, this group's feedback on that. We, we kind of decided to, because we can't control or, or even have any insight into the relationship between who is requesting these reports and why, that we would... Um, we would continue to fill them for whoever requests them for whatever reason. 
because we don't really have the means to track that down and to, to vet that. So, um, and it's all public information, just to be clear for everyone who isn't familiar, it's completely public information that we use in these reports. So um, we decided that we would uh, continue to, to just do them to, to whoever requests them, but just send the report to that person. And then we're going, but we're not gonna post publicly. Um, what we're gonna do instead is reach out to maybe 10 or 15 projects um, to see if they would allow us to run these reports on their behalf and public and and publish them publicly as a sample, so that people could see what what these reports were all about and what they would look like. So I would love to hear feedback on anyone who is interested in this conversation or has thoughts on this. I appreciate the idea of adapting towards who needs it, right? Like we go about something with a a given user in mind, but if we can be of benefit to someone else and it benefits us to use the system that way, then let's do it. I do think this, uh, this kind of change in mindset will require some minor edits to the, uh, to the form and the page, just kind of in the language we use. This was discussed in the. Uh, this was discussed in that meeting as well. Is that we uh, prior we'd been framing it as get a report on your project, where where now we're it'll be more like get a report on a project. So, and we we removed that ownership component. I was also thinking Elizabeth about your comment that we don't really have a lot of insight into the, the actual use case and now that if we expand to different types of individuals that they might be interested in, in slightly different piece of information or how they use it, it will be slightly different. I'm um, just wondering, trying to look at the form again uh, in real time to see if it is there's any place where we could capture that even if it's very like just like what how do you intend to use this or like what what do you want to learn from this or something as simple as that um, would just shed a little bit of light on how people want to use this information that, again, like depending on what, who they are and if the personas are changing, that could give us a little bit more insight into it. Uh, to that point, we, we do have the, we do have yeah. the ability to capture requests for certain metrics or certain things that they want to have measured. Uh, we don't necessarily have the ability to change up the reports on an individual basis. And I, if Matt was here, he would probably say, no, 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 we don't want to do that. Uh, well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say change the report because I think that that would cause a lot of headache, just uh, the intended use of the report. Or like so we have a commentary on that. We have this question, why do you want a community health report? So maybe they can give the reasoning like why they want, yeah. if they want to like, that question I think might go, maybe we can tweak a wording a little bit to capture that aspect, but we have, that question in the form. Okay, I uh, thought I remembered something, so that makes sense. There's a there's a second question that actually asks what other metrics they're interested in. Okay. Uh, so in theory, well, we are so. collecting them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Does anyone see any anything problematic of someone requesting a project that the information about a project that they don't own? Is there something that like we might be missing or not thought about. I don't see a problem with that because all the information that we are providing with the report is aggregated. So it's not about individual people. It's not about individual um, behaviors or anything. And it's aggregated over a one year time frame. Um, I don't see any issues. So one of, oh, oh, sorry, go for it, Kevin. Jenks, go for it, Kevin. Oh, I was just going to say one of the one of the issues that was brought up in that community reports meeting was that a project competitor could pull that data and maybe use it to frame that project in a uh, poor light or provide comparison between their projects, and that might not be. Uh, that might not be something that uh, 
the project would be happy about. Yeah, I mean, that that was actually this, I, I had a similar concern. I mean, although all the information is public, like why get in between that, right? I mean, do the job on behalf of a, like a competing project or the two projects who don't get along with, with each other. And there's a potential for, for the chaos project to, I mean, why, why get in, involved in the fight potentially? Um, I, I've got an idea for a solution to this, yeah. which would just be you, um, you ask the, you get consent from the project that they're asking for information about. To say if some if somebody's like to get would like to use this tool to get more information about your project is that okay? Um, other than that, kinda, we, we don't want to provide that tool otherwise. Yeah. I mean that's kind of dicey too. Like there's some random person that says, "Can you run a report on this project ABC?" And we don't know who that person is. Like does he does he or she belong to that project or is just snooping around because they're involved in a competing project, right? So there's you know no way to like really enforce it. Um, I mean, this is like, I don't want to start like a whole big can of worms, but I think, you know, like I would personally not run the report on somebody's behalf, just give them how to, just give them instructions on how to do it. Like here's where the tools are. Here's a white paper on, on how you can, you know, how you can do metrics for whatever community you're interested in. And then we're done with that. Like here's here's a white paper and best practices on how to do it. Like not run the report on somebody's behalf. I think that just, I think we're just taking a lot more on than than we need to. But the yeah. downside of that is like we don't know who is like using that potentially. But um, so I mean that's I obviously I haven't been involved in this this discussion in in a separate meetings, but that's sort of my concern. I think it was more from a marketing perspective also like to have the, what Chaos is doing to reaching out more audiences. I, Matt, I, go ahead. Oh, Matt. sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I, I, I was just saying that the, that the way we do it with badging for verification is we have them provide we work with events and we had them provide that they're an organizer for the event that they're working with. Uh, I think having like, all we ask for is a link. And if it, if, if it shows them as an organizer for the event, then that, I, I don't know what you want to do with that, but I, I think Ray's right. Um, and I, I, I see that like, it, it should be somebody that's got some kind of uh, maintainer role in the, in the project. If they, if they're going to ask for a report. Matt Broberg, were you going to say something? I was thinking along the lines of Kevin that it could be used nefariously. I was mostly thinking as like, you know, free labor to do due diligence on startups that could, that are open source based or um, yeah, or just kind of a go fetch this rock type task for us, for somebody who's like, oh, well this takes no effort and it will take a bunch of effort for other people. So I might as well do it. So yeah, being a little particular about how we filter um, so that we don't end up on menial tasks and or adding a throttle to how many we're willing to do, um, be pretty choosy about it. I, I trust our judgment in this group, like the request will come in and we'll be like, oh, that doesn't feel right. We won't do that. Um, so I, I think we'll end up getting to where Ray is right now, where it's just like, this seems uh, like something we're putting ourselves in the middle of. I love that vision though, of saying like, our goal is to build a system that is self-service. Um, but I think we're all acknowledging that we don't totally know what that looks like. So we have to be in the process to experience the pain of doing it a few times. And, and I think we'll quickly build something external. And maybe just to comment on that one thing, I think I, the anxiety of all open source is a little bit that people can use it for nefarious things. Like, I don't think we have to worry ourselves with with that, we're accepting that risk by being open source project and community. Um, but yeah, maybe we won't make it so easy that we do it for them. Yeah. So I'll, I'll add to that. So Matt, I think your point is well taken. I think the goal is to automate this. 
that I think we're talking about the community reports. I'm late, but I'm yeah, you I hopped right into I'm, it. Yep, you got it. <laughs> I think I got it. Um, and I, I think your point is well taken too that sometimes the process of automation involves humans for a while to understand kind of the flow of work, um, what automation could look like at different spots and how that automation can be connected. So I agree. And I know that Sean with Augur is very much gearing towards an automated process. That is like a hundred percent on his mind. Um, Georg, it may be a little bit harder with Cauldron. I don't know if you could speak to that. Yeah, as of right now, it's not on the roadmap to automate anything. Um, might be down the road. Cauldron right now has still the challenge of also finding users that actually get value out of it. So the user base is still fairly small and they're experimenting with different features to see what people respond to, how they respond to it. Um, integrating with community reports is currently not on that list. And until then, I will just copy paste the images. OK, so it sounds like just wrapping up this part of the, the meeting, um, it sounds like we're maybe not a fan of providing the reports to people who are not open source maintainers. Um, everyone seems to be kind of in agreement with that. And I, I'm totally fine with that um, as well. So um, we will take that part out of the uh, outreach plan and just focus on open source maintainers. I guess OSPOs are a little gray area there, um, but they could, I mean, I guess in theory, they could reach out to the pro individual projects and just say, hey, you know, we're curious about these, so about this data. So would you get that? That's a great idea. Like you, you, part of the outreach could be to say like, Hey, and if you're interested in your community doing this, ask the maintainer to contact us here. Like that way we're funneling it through the project. Then yeah. that, uh, my question would be, how do we ascertain whether the requester is a maintainer or not? I think we see them contributing to the open source project. It will be a good bar. It, it won't tell us whether they're a current or past, but I yeah. don't mind if the past one does. Yeah, I think to Matt Snell's point earlier about just asking, maybe, and maybe this is a change that we make on the form. I hate to keep changing that form, <laughs> Kevin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kevin's like, stop changing it, God. Um, but anyway, we could maybe just ask for a, a link or, well, I, actually, we do have their GitHub username. Yeah. Right? I think that's on the. So GitHub, we get to know the what are the who are the contributors. Like they can be core contributor, maintainer, or periphery contributor. We don't know by looking at the repo. Like it'll be okay, highest contributor. Maybe highest contributor is even not a maintainer. We cannot ascertain through how we ascertain who is the maintainer. That is the point. So if any of the contributor asks for the report, we can just provide it to them, or we, it has to be with the maintainer. I would say any con contributor, I don't know how y'all feel, but I would think that it would be okay because they're clearly affiliated in some way with the, the project. Because okay, so maintainer uh, is fuzzy, I think. Oh, sorry. So we, we oh, don't currently ask for, we don't currently ask for their GitHub or, or, or GitLab uh, username. However, we can, we can make a minor edit to make that happen. And then I would uh, I would agree with you. I think it's just you, we would just have to make sure that they were a contributor to that project. And I don't think we I don't think we have to look to see how much of a contributor they were. I think the set the bar as low as possible for us. OK, that makes sense. Thank you everyone for your feedback on that. It was super, super, super helpful. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, moving along. Is that okay to move along? Everyone's okay. Okay. So the, the uh, goal, so the next I'm one sorry, is, the goal, oh. I'm sorry. The goal was to just maintain it as maintainers, at least for the start and just see how that goes. Is that right? Cool. Yeah, yeah. 
I think it's easier and as, as others said that it just eliminates or reduces the potential for conflict and us being in the middle of stuff. Right which we don't okay, want to be cool. in the middle of stuff. Cool. Um, so the so the language on the form and on that page needs to change so that it's as a maintainer you can request these reports. Uh, and then we need to add a some sort of user ID uh, capture in the form. Uh, but then on on the the checking side, we're only checking that they're a contributor. Is that okay? I think that's where we landed. We can try it, and if it if it's terrible and does not work at all, we can change it. Like we can just iterate. It's totally fine. I don't think it's like a, a showstopper. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. So the next item on the list is. Um, talking about chaos con and um, I know there has been discussion about this in the the Asia Pacific meetings um, they're very keen to do a chaos con China so if you all are interested in that conversation um, those uh, APAC meetings happen on what's today Tuesday they happen on Wednesday mornings uh, I think uh, King sent out an email on the mailing list so if you want more information about what's on the agenda and all of that check your emails because I'm assuming everyone here is subscribe to the mailing list. If you're not, then you should be. So go do that. Um, and then uh, last time we had said TF for a deeper dive discussion after Thanksgiving, and I'm assuming that we were also talking about uh, just the the either North America or, or European Chaos Con. I'm not sure how we wanted to talk about those things. Um, Matt G, I think you have some feels on that, I would assume, based on the email earlier today yes yeah so chaos con eu right is officially not happening in tw soon <laughs> so in one month <laughs> it's a stunner i know for everybody i'm sure you were all booked for that um so i think right now our our chaos con efforts look like they are kind of working with king it, with the chaos con asia pacific so i think that there's discussion about perhaps even some in-person component to it um as well as an online component um, in terms of north america for 2021 is there is open source summit north america on the date books yet do you know does anybody know we have it in our outreach list I'm not sure that it is. It the is. Open Source Summit North America is August 4 to 6 oh, it in is. Vancouver. Oh, OK. So I mean, to me, that's always the most sensible conference to align with. I don't know what people's thoughts are. That has always worked well for us in the past. Um, they moved it. They moved it back to August. So. Sometimes it's October. It's back to Vancouver too. Didn't they? Didn't um, they move it into June this last year? Yeah, they they moved it to June to avoid conflicts with because uh, August wasn't a good time. That was a conversation I had with Linux Foundation events people, but obviously with the pandemic, that sort of went out the window. I mean, I mean who knows? They might bring it back to June. Um, but I think like this year and next year is still going to be a little unusual, I think. So. Well, unless anybody has like kind of an objection, does August, no, I, I mean, I, given... I think that sounds like a good plan. Like, Right, unless things stay south, yeah. then we deal with it. <laughs> when we get there but until then we at least we're, mentally, we're, we, we're assuming canadians will let americans into their country again right, right. well that's actually true too so yeah. <laughs> you can just people move like to daniel Vancouver, might be washington. able to travel yeah people you go, like daniel go to washington might be able to travel but <laughs> we can say hello to each other across the borders like hey <laughs> 
All right. So I, I don't know if that addresses your question, Elizabeth. But... It does, um, but I have a follow-up question based okay. on previous year's experience. How far in advance do you start planning that? Like, is, is this something we would start planning like in January after holidays or uh, like now? So, well, so I'm going to look at Georg because yeah, he can answer that better. In the past, we started planning this about five months out. So we had one chaos con and took a few weeks off and then started the next planning the next one. Okay, so, so maybe February. Okay, so is is a slow, that is a slow burn now. Yeah. Now I was going to say by now we'll probably be reviewing CFPs, right, Georg? Like you know the deadline would have been like around now and the CFP selection committees would be getting together to, you know, notify speakers. Like, I think we tried to do that before the holidays and book, book travel, but uh, assuming like, okay. like a FOSM event was happening, like, or pre-FOSM event was happening in like early February, right? So. But, yeah, for the FOSM event, we would yeah. be reviewing the CFP right now. And then for right. the August event, we would do this in May, April, May-ish. The okay, Linux Foundation so, hasn't okay. published their CFP yet, and we try to align it with the CFP of the main event. And we decided to push the metrics release to March, is that right? Someone refresh my memory of what that was decided. Uh, yes. Yeah, March. So maybe right after that release, we okay. can start on ChaosCon August. Does yeah, I think March and, March and October are the two release dates, I believe, or months. Call them windows. Okay. Windows. I like that. OK, so and, and I we will. May, we may uh, already have a. We, we may already have a keynote for ChaosCon, perhaps, looking at Nicole, who brought this up <laughs> in a prior meeting. So this this could be good. OK, so. Sorry, uh, I was on mute. Yep. <laughs> yes. Woo <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about it? I'm curious now, too. <laughs> um, so uh, I was talking to Nithya before, uh, before the Thanksgiving holiday, um, and I didn't, I didn't uh, make a solicitation at all, um, but she uh, said, you know, she really it, um, likes what we're doing here with the Chaos Project, um, and she'd like to speak at one of the next conferences. Love to be fantastic. Yeah. OK, so what I will do is just put um, a reminder somewhere. Oh, bye, Matt. You already left. Um, the ghost of Matt. Goodbye. Um, so I'll just put a reminder somewhere in my calendar to just bring this up back at this meeting, I guess, in March after the release. So cool. Um, and then I think we're down to, so we have about 20 minutes. Uh, we're down to the working group updates. Hooray, hooray. So five. So we have four minutes per group, right? If we have 20 minutes divided by five, that's four. Oh, good. So uh, who wants to give the DNI um, update? You have four minutes, right? Well, Matt, you should give your update on the badging. Yeah, I'll talk about badging. Someone else can talk about DNI. <laughs> no, but um, DNI badging has um, its first real application um, from the open source community. Um, so I'll put the uh, the issue in here um, and the link there. So I'll put it in the chat too. But I'll just put it everywhere. Um, but basically. We have our first big application. We also have a lot of prospects for um, future um, future applications from all kinds of organizations, um, and I am I'm just thrilled. Uh, I'm, I'm I was beaming the whole last outreach meeting. So I, I I'm just um, 
I am glad that we're that things are working out with the badging organization. And if you want to help at all, um, uh, reach out to me, uh, and I will uh, I will help you get started with the project. Stuff. My email. So I'm super. Ha I'll just say I'm super happy too. This is Foss backstage um, that has applied, which is great. So um, it's just nice to see this this um, in in the real world <laughs> or in live or whatever the phrase might be. Yeah, super happy. Um, and then we also talked in the meeting, the outreach meeting. Um, we have had conversations. Georg, thank you with Angela and Annie LaRue. And Annie has actually participated in the chaos project with the community health reports. So about working with the LF to start badging perhaps some of their smaller events. Um, Elizabeth knows the person, Rich, who is in charge of Apache events, or at least the a title associated with events at, at Apache, <laughs> whatever that title might be. Um, and then Nicole has had some really great ideas with, um, it sounds like some local groups in the Portland area that would, that would benefit um, by going through the program um, and other just great contacts as well. So I think the last couple of meetings in terms of doing outreach have been really productive with respect to reaching out to, to people individually as well as organizations that could benefit from going through the badging process. So that's been great. And then on the metrics side, we are advancing. We have two that are under review, documentation accessibility and project burnout. And the DNI working group is actively advancing the public chat channels metric, which used to be communication channels and documentation discoverability, which is the third metric that came out of our documentation metric after we split it up into documentation um, accessibility and documentation usability. So that third one is moving forward. I wasn't we in the made last some, DNA meeting. Yes, we worked on it for 20 minutes or so. Cool, cool. Any questions for anyone in the DNI, either Matt or Georg? Anyone? No? All right. <clears throat> and since Sean isn't here, um, I'll just give a quick update on evolution. And Vinod, Kevin, y'all can jump in if I missed something. Um, we uh, Evolution completed the change across the board from reviews to change requests. So that uh, nomenclature is clarified now as change requests. And then I think the current metric that we're discussing is around branch lifecycle and strategies, which was actually a um, kind of a nudge or an idea from the Asia Pacific group. So uh, we have had some really good conversations about that and it's still a work in progress right now. Basically um, why branches exist and how long they exist and what, like if there's clear strategies around that for the project. So it's really interesting. If you're interested, you should come to Evolution and talk about that with us. What, what am I missing, Vinod and Kevin? Anything else on that in Evolution? Oh, it's been, it was, was so long ago, I forget. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's why I'm asking you guys. Meeting. I know for all the updates, okay, I'm going back to just the old minutes and just reading wow. them, right. which you could all do too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to spoon feed. It's totally fine. Uh, okay, let's move on <laughs> to comment because I see there's we do have some other stuff to talk about after we do these updates. So, um, who wants to give I, update do, on common? I'll. I will do the, I'll read the minutes from Common. So I won't read all the minutes, but it's also advancing metrics. I think Vinod and um, 
Sean are kind of coming to some closure on some of the work that they're doing in uh, common, which is uh, great to see. So, um, so that's really the update. It's, it's just positively moving forward on, on those metrics. That's it, think, I'm done. Okay, <laughs> I think that was a great update. Thank you. Um, I think <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> probably going to be the same kind of updates for risk and also for value, just mostly advancing the, the metrics that we're talking about. Well, I'm just, Is I'll there, make one comment. Someone want to make the one, risk? I, I don't know if it's a risk update. It's just, I, so just thinking about kind of chaos as a whole, and I know that we've, and people seem to get, don't get mad at me if I'm going to say the word dependencies, but like I, can't, I just can't shake how important I think this is. I, I really can't. I, I just think there's so there's going to be such a demand for understanding both upstream and downstream dependencies and the health in that network. I just I can't get beyond how important I think this is going to be. And again, you can all just kind of <laughs> say what <laughs> sure whatever um but at some point i i think the chaos project has to not only think about metrics which are advancing quite nicely around dependencies sophia we had the what, do you remember what that one that um that was brought forward the libier yeah, yeah. libier we're talking we talked a lot about so, libier and potentially using it as an average versus a sum but as a way to quantify the age of any individual version but then there was obviously a lot of discussion around how version age isn't always a measure of maturity or quality so trying to measure that but also whether or not it would be a useful metric to employ. so i think we, we did make some progress on thinking about yeah. how these types of concepts could be applied i think i know nomad probably feels this as well it's still a very complicated topic so i think the challenge for us has been trying to really narrow in on things that are both actionable and interesting like are not just things that we can measure and so those are the things we propose but things that are actually also useful um and given that the topic is so wide and complex trying to figure out where the overlap between those two things has taken up i think maybe three or four risk meetings at this point and we'll probably continue to take up a few more going forward I, I agree. And I think so the way that we have talked about, say, like DNI metrics is kind of bringing them forward and say the DNI badging program, or we even talk about, say, like evolution metrics, you know, and bringing those forward in the community health reports, because that's largely evolution metrics. Um, something around dependencies, I can't help. This is part of it, to Sophia's point that we have the metrics, say, like Libyr, we think through what that metric means, but how do we bring Libyr together with, I don't know, whatever other dependency metrics we have to, to create kind of a roadmap for better understanding, not just here are the metrics, but how can you bring, you know, say three metrics around dependency together to, to really provide a, um, at least a little bit more transparency on your upstream dependencies. I, something along those lines, the actionability around those. Yeah, and I think we've also spent a lot of time just thinking about the feasibility and tooling that's currently available. Um, just to know that some things are easier to collect and other things it's like, this would be awesome if we could measure it, but there isn't currently a tool that's available as an open source project or something similar that could be used easily. So if you like dependencies, come to risk. <laughs> I think that's where we're talking about them a lot <laughs> right now. Interesting so I, topic. I, when does the the risk uh, working group meet again, please? When do you guys meet? Thursdays at four p.m. Central. Um, it is we're meeting this week, so it's oh, every okay. other week. Oh, interesting topic. Yeah. So I I haven't been to a risk meeting since the time change because the the four o'clock time is kind of weird for me. Uh, but I, I I did want to say that. Uh, dependencies are being talked about in the evolution working group as well. Uh, there are uh, seven metrics around dependencies that we've kind of proposed and are talking about. 
Uh, so that's an, another good place to talk about dependencies. Yeah, and uh, I attend both the meetings. So whenever there is an overlap, I try to chime in and say, okay, we are observing overlap here. So that is kind of But different. why can't we uh, come together like whole sessions and look from different perspectives? So we don't have redundancy and uh, try to point uh, people on different kind of concepts that might be confusing. Two okay. groups should, yeah. Yeah, I was going to quickly say we we decided up front to let individual working groups talk about this topic because it is so large and we didn't want to combine everyone with the thought that it might might derail the broader conversations because it's such a big topic. But I think the hope is that we will come together again at a certain point. I think it might be nice if now that we're kind of the risk group is closing in on a couple of metrics and ideas for metrics. So I think once we have that a bit more formalized, I'd love to bring that to the other groups that are also discussing it. And then potentially we have an individual powwow around dependency metrics and see where we have overlap, see how other teams have approached it differently. Because I, I think we, we wanted to see how this conversation could progress with different focus areas um, to see if just like I don't know, just in ideation, the more people that have space to talk about it, the more ideas that will surface versus forcing everyone in one room and then only five ideas come out because there's too many voices happening. So I think that right now it is a bit chaotic, but at a certain point we should be coming together. So I think, Matt, I'm, I'm guessing that maybe we need one or two more conversations in risk, but then maybe in the new year, we should we should try to set something up. Yeah, I like that. That'd be good. That was I think good. they're... Uh... I think there's some uh, there's different perspectives in how we're looking at dependencies too. The, the use cases are different for risk versus evolution, and it, it might be as simple as saying you know risk is more focused on downstream and evolution is more focused on upstream or something like that. Uh, but the, the perspective is different, uh, so I, I think it's very appropriate for the two different working groups to be dealing with this topic. So. I just I'm jotting this down in the notes, like maybe at the new year to to figure out a way to bring these conversations together. And it could be in this community call, even if it's just for 20 minutes to start the conversation. Not sure where that would be quite yet, but it's a good idea. Yeah, I think it will be engaging because it will bring different people to, you know, uh, understand what is happening and what has been happening in the background. And it can also draw them now to the working group just to follow up the conversation. And it, it kind of sounds like Matt G, your like long-term vision is to maybe there's enough meat here to bring it into its own program or initiative <clears throat> some way. That's what it kind of, I feel it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. I think that makes total sense. And I think there's a, <laughs> I just hear about it all the time. Like a lot of people care about this like deeply um, and providing guidance, I think would be very, very welcome not only from here are the metrics, but here's ways that you can bring these together, like the actual methods, processes and methods that you can use to bring these together to provide meaning. Cool, so if we were doing like our goals or whatever for 2021, 20, maybe that would be on that list. So, cool, I like it. Um, okay, value, we'll just talk about that. We got three more minutes. Uh, Matt's not here, Matt B. Um, looks like they also did the change request update. Social listening is was social currency metric system. It's now social, list, social, social listening, I can talk. Um, and then yes, we are also having some university OSPO metrics conversations in that group as well. So if you're interested in any of those things, you should come to value. And then I see someone put um, the holiday meeting schedules on here to discuss. Uh, I, I'm assuming we want to maybe decide whether or not to cancel or when to cancel or how we want to do it. So I'm not sure what y'all have done in the past. So maybe we I, I dropped there. those in and I, I threw those dates in because uh, in the past we, we generally have kind of canceled a full month's worth of meetings. Uh, and if we uh, we're getting there pretty quickly. <laughs> 
uh, as you can see, that if we uh, we have maybe one week to two weeks left before we would start canceling meetings for the holidays, or, so. Do we have thoughts on this? Who has thoughts? I'm putting my thoughts in the notes. I'm okay with the 13th through 18th and 4th to 8th, but I'd, I'd like my um, 21st to 1st to myself. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's actually smarter to either just have the meetings or not have the meetings. Sometimes in the past, we're like, I'll be here if anybody shows up. And then like one person shows up and you don't really have a meeting. And then it, I don't know, it just seems weird. So. Are you saying you don't like hanging out with us, Matt? Thanks a lot. Jeez. I, that's, yeah, it's, that was totally it. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're pretty, I would say, unanimous to cancel the 21st through the 25th. That seems like pretty much a no-brainer and as well the next week would be the 20th through the first kind of a no-brainer um so it's those like fringe yeah. bookend weeks um yeah that if we're okay i would say have them yeah i am and if you know obviously if you personally are going to be on vacation or whatever you don't have to come you're not obligated <laughs> we'd love to see you unlike matt we would love to see you but <laughs> no i'm just teasing <laughs> of course so, okay, cool. 1249, my time, 1149, other people's time, but one minute left. What's left? What do we got? Good to see everybody after the break. Indeed it is. That's all I got. Agreed. <laughs> I missed all your faces. I like all your faces. They make me happy. So, All right, well, I will see you all later on at whatever next meeting or on the mailing list, whatever we, we decide. So um, have a great day. See everybody later. All right. You too. Bye. Okay, bye. Everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.